We are not responsible for your behaviour. We believe in common sense. No, 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 no crisis, no. Oh, get Britain working again with tax cuts and cheese. You're listening to News Talk on Strange But True Radio, episode two of 2023 with Philip Jones and Philip Keeler in the UK. Always laugh, we always laugh at Liz Trust there. Stop laughing at previous Prime Ministers, Bill James. On tonight's show, in the UK, Dominic Raab is facing fresh calls to be suspended from his post. And in the US, there is a push to get those accused and executed of witchcraft posthumous exonerations. We are downloadable from from wherever you get your podcasts, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify and Amazon Music. All that to come, but first, here's what's trending around the world. In Ukraine, the defence minister there is warning Russia are preparing a major attack on the freedom of its people on the 24th of Feb. According to intelligence, Moscow has amassed thousands of troops. Meanwhile, officials in Ukraine have asked Western leaders to help protect itself from air attacks after Germany, the US and the UK agreed to send them tanks. Now, in the US, no classified documents Documents were found during an FBI search of President Joe Biden's home in Delaware. That's according to his lawyer. In a statement, Mr. Biden's attorney said the search was planned with the president's full support. To North Korea now. The country's backed hackers stole £1.4 billion of crypto in 2022, says blockchain analysis firm Chain Analysis. That's This is nearly quadruples North Korea's previous record for cryptocurrency theft. And in Australia, King Charles III will not feature on Australia's new $5 note. The Reserve Bank of Australia, RBA, says the new design will pay tribute to the culture and history of Indigenous Australians. A portrait of the late Queen Elizabeth II appears on the current design of the $5 note. To our top story tonight, in the UK, Dominic Raab is facing fresh calls to be suspended from his post. This is a story uh, revealed uh, by the Guardian newspaper. It says three senior civil servants who worked with him had been interviewed by the official inquiry into his alleged bullying. Uh, Rishi Sunak has rejected suspending Raab, who is the Justice Secretary and Deputy Prime Minister, despite allegations against him increasing. Raab has vowed to thoroughly rebute and refute the formal complaints made against him. Um, Phil, there is a lot of sleaze, a lot, a lot, a lot of sleaze and possibly wrongdoings in the Conservative Party right now. Members of the party must, I reckon, wake up each day, each morning or night, whatever they get up, wondering what negative news story is going to break next. Uh, that It's an absolute mess of a party, isn't it? Well, it has been for a while. I mean, Johnson was spending more time working out how he was going to cover up his gaffes than actually governing the country. That's why it all went wrong. Gaffes for cover-ups. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's we have politicians who are career politicians who don't really know anything other than politics, so which is very damaging for us as a society because they only really make comments to promote their career as opposed to making comments to promote society and our economy. It's an unreal illusion that they're creating, and Dominic Raab's was very good at creating an, an illusion, otherwise he wouldn't have got to where he's arrived at as Deputy Prime Minister. But the problem we've got is that it shows the standard of the quality of people that are entering into politics. If you've got people like Dominic Raab is Deputy Prime Minister, and equally if you've got people like um, Rishi Sunak. Rishi Sunak, as far as, in my opinion, a pathetic little man who has got a 
a nasty little voice and a nasty little attitude. But that's my opinion. I also think he's a crook. I mean, I'm entitled to think he's a crook. There's plenty of evidence to suggest that he is a crook. Um, he ha- he he presided over the disappearance of well over fifty billion pounds, and then Liz Truss, they say, lost us sixty billion. I mean, that's not entirely true, but she, I don't think. But she cost the economy an awful lot of money. Now we're the only member of G7, I believe, who's into um, uh, shrinking of the economy as, as opposed to expansion of the economy. Anyway, Ro- Dominic Rab. He didn't realise that um, Dover was important to, between Dover and Calais was really an important crossing for trade between us and continental Europe. I mean, how stupid is that? Um, he didn't realise the difference between the Red Sea and the Irish Sea. I mean, talk about thick. I mean, it's recorded. This is recorded information. Um, he didn't realise. He didn't read the Good Friday Agreement as Brexit secretary. And what a thing! What kind of a what kind of a secretary of Brexit is someone who doesn't even read the documentation that they were supposed to be negotiating about? He said Terrible. the typical food bank user has cash flow problems. Cash flow problems. They haven't got any money. Yeah, that's why they go into food banks. And he said they have cash flow problems. He failed to realise how much money he would in, he would gain by increasing contributions to national insurance. Couldn't work it out. Didn't know. Hadn't done his homework. He said that um, coronavirus. If we got coronavirus, actually, the significant, the main significance of coronavirus, that we need to get Brexit done quicker because of the coronavirus. What? Yeah. He did. Um, he denied calling for NHS privatisation, despite what he wrote in his own book, which suggested. It said, I think, as far as I know, he said that he he supports provide. He 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 wants to privatise the national health service. He also doesn't believe in. He it has been written that he doesn't believe in human rights. Do he doesn't believe in human rights, and he's our he's our vice. He's our deputy, deputy prime minister. Hmm? He's our deputy prime minister. Unbelievable! <laughs> it's unbelievable. Liz Truss is similar. She didn't believe in. She doesn't believe. She doesn't have faith in human rights either. That's what everybody's been fighting fighting for for, for years. That's what Nelson. Why Nelson Mandela was elected as uh, pr- the, the the most uh, important politician of the twentieth century because he fought for human rights. And we've got people in power who don't support human rights. Do you think? Do you think that the main problem in the Conservative Party is a lot of them have been to? Cambridge, Eton, and some very posh boys and girls schools. And they're just, by going to those places, they're not living in the real world. Uh, Mummy and Daddy have sponsored them and given them money for everything. Do you think, actually, the real, real people need to take up power in Parliament? And yes, there should be some sort of intelligence test, but we get the, the, the normal person who's done normal things into parliament i don't think i don't think an intelligence test is a very good medium necessarily because some people aren't very good at tests so we might be blocking some you know talent because they can't they're not very good at tests some people are really really clever um as i say but anyway um yes well it could be if someone is going the, the trouble is now that the people who elect people in <clears throat> political parties don't seem to really understand that much about econom- economics themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean they're all they're all interested in politics. I mean look how how on earth did we get someone like Liz Truss as prime minister? I mean I've always thought she was weird, but to, the way she delivers speeches is wooden, she has no personality. How did she get there? How did Dominic someone like Dominic Raab become uh, Deputy Prime Minister, how did I know how Rishi Sunak did it because he went to the right school? Well, Dominic Raab did probably as well, I would imagine. But um, Liz Truss went to Cambridge, and it's exactly what you're saying. They they live in this isolated world where they live in like an ivory tower, so they look upon the world beneath them and don't really understand how it works. And that's, that's exactly what it is. But we have the other problems are people like Boris Johnson who turned his coat in relation to. Brexit, and he was going. He was very pro-European, and then he realised that because 
if he voted if he voted for Brexit, it meant that he would undermine Cameron. Cameron would have to resign and it would open the door for him to become a candidate for prime minister. And he succeeded in doing that. And the reason why he did it was because they were Bullingdon Club rivals. So Johnson was after being prime minister. He didn't care how he got there. He didn't care what damage he did to get there. So long as he was prime minister, that's all he wanted to do. And he said that ever since he was a little kid, <laughs> since about eight years old. There's videos of him walking around saying he wants to be king or something maybe um, <laughs> but that's what i heard i think you know? i had i watched similar we've got two i think we've got uh just over two years of these uh plonkers in in power what is your prediction are they going to get into another four years five years no, no. is it going to be a hung part uh, part of me thinks it's going to be a hung parliament like it was a few uh a few years ago really you may well be right, but I doubt it. I think that people are so fed up with the Tories now. Everything they do and say is absolutely is nonsense. I mean, soon think about it. We've got. I think we should be. I think we should. People should be out protesting peacefully against having this government in power. I think that well, there's so much evidence of corruption. It's everywhere. It's all the time. Sunak's wife was awarded a government contract for her firm, which she'd invested, I don't know how many million pounds in. And she was given this contract with guaranteed purchases for vaccines, I'm told. Vaccines that we don't need. And they're throwing billions of pounds at these things. It's just because so they can make themselves more and more money. You know, Sunak's wife paid thirty grounds. Her thirty, I believe, it's thirty thousand pounds to be a non-dom taxpayer, so she could avoid paying millions and millions of pounds worth of tax. Wow! Our prime minister's wife. So why is he in power? Every he mm -hmm. said all the rescuing that he's doing. We wouldn't if we didn't have. If we hadn't if he hadn't disappeared. Thirty-seven billion pounds. Thirty-seven billion pounds disappeared on Tess and Trace. The Irish did Tess and Trace for seven hundred and sixty thousand pounds. Microsoft and Word, as I understand it, offered to do Tess and Trace for nothing. So why did Sunak? Why, why, why did Sunak disappear? Thirty-seven billion pounds on test and trace which he didn't need to if he hadn't done that the nurses could be paid a massive pay rise not just a small one the, they wouldn't have a problem with the train companies the train companies right what happens with the train companies you've got train operating companies which are owned by the italians the dutch and the germans predominantly and the french i would imagine yeah. um they are paid a guaranteed amount of money whether or not there's a service apparently yeah, because that's tra as train rail operators, right? And all that money goes overseas. It doesn't go to this country because we don't own those companies, right? That money could be put back into the infrastructure of the railways instead of going onto continental Europe. Well, obviously we're allowed to invest, but with trains, trains are a very difficult thing because they're a vital part of the infrastructure. So ownership is, you know, you can justify state ownership. If we bought the rail companies back, which we could do. Then we could use all that money to be put back into um, the infrastructure of the railways, and we'd have a much better system. However, for some reason, the government are rewarding contracts to the trail operating companies. It's a guaranteed. Now, why would you offer a guaranteed income to people unless there was something going on behind the scenes? Because it does seem remarkably odd that the government are backing a system which doesn't, which is totally inefficient and doesn't benefit the economy. But no one's actually addressing that. The they can't. The Tories can't even discuss this properly with the rail unions because they're, they're, they're sabotaging the, the, every meeting when they go to have a when they go to talk about you know we're going to we want to negotiate this this and this. They insert clauses and the night before they're going to. Have a have a meeting, so they go to the meeting and they make any negotiation impossible. If when they even get around to negotiating, and the people who are negotiating on behalf of the government are equally disturbed by their behaviour, mm. so there's something very, very, very odd going on about the, here in this government. This is Some strange but true. Radio. He's Phil Jones. I'm Phil Killer. We're going to be talking about. Uh, 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 
families of generations and generations before uh, trying to exonerate um, their family members of witchcraft. Uh, it's an interesting story. It's taken 375 years, though, to get this far. Back right after this. <laughs> that off gem the energy regulator is launching an urgent investigation into british gas following allegations that the company sent debt collectors who broke into customers homes to install pre-payment meters that's outrageous um we'll get more news on that through the coming days and weeks we'll bring you the latest on that as we get it uh, get the latest breaking news of course to your phone via our twitter feed add us using our handle at strange btr you can contact us via email studio at strange but true radio.com <laughs> to the US now and in Connecticut there is a push to get those accused and executed of witchcraft posthumous exonerations it's taken 375 years to get this far families of those descendants put to death and historians finally hope to clear the names of 11 people and many others accused of having ties to Satan now uh, Phil 8th 
a ninth generation of families involved in this case. One can only imagine uh, the terror and heartache of that time. Uh, Similar things happened in the UK where many women were murdered by the state and, uh, and church. Is this too little too late for families who were torn apart? I think it's a joke. Do you? Yeah, what 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 are we going to when are we going to stop apologizing? I think the Romans in particular in Italy should apologize for the slavery 2000 years ago for yeah. enslaving white people in all of Europe basically. I think they should be hanging their head in shame. Yeah. The Africa who sold the slaves to the Portuguese should be apologizing to the Africans for selling slaves to the Portuguese and the English and the, whoever else. Mm. So where do we, where does it stop? I mean, are the North Africans going to the pirate states of the 1500s? Are they going to, in the 1600s, are they going to apologize for taking slaves from England? Yeah. It's really oh, difficult, it, isn't it? Because it, in that time... That... Are the Spanish going to apologize for enforced labor in South America? Yeah. <clears throat> You know, it's really difficult because laws change, things change, uh, human rights it's change. Um, it, it, what, we've got other things to worry about than exhuming witches. Okay, we're sorry for all of that. Why aren't the why isn't the Pope standing and saying we apologise for for uh, murdering all the two hundred thousand witches yeah. from fourteen twenty eight to about seventeen fifty? Yeah. Why aren't they apologising for that? You know. Really difficult. This is this is what you see now often in England, the way people, some people behave and start attacking anybody for any any um, anything that they've done wrong. See, like so there's a woman on the local uh, website, you know, for for neighbours, and she she wanders around taking photographs of parked cars that she thinks she thinks are parked illegally, and then dobbing them into the authorities. Oh, brilliant. And she broadcasts this on the local website and everybody jumps in and goes, let the tyres down. It's terrible. I had to walk around a parked car. It was dangerous. No, it wasn't. And they're all they're all doing it. They're all jumping in and attacking. You know, it's te- it's awful. Yeah. And it's a dreadful mentality that we have in this country now. It, you know, other countries aren't don't necessarily behave like that, I'm sure. See... So- I mean, I was, I didn't know you were going to react to that story like that. I was thinking that you were going to go the other way. And I was thinking like, maybe, way. maybe compensation should be changing hands here. Maybe the, the state, the US state of uh, Connecticut and the church should be giving these families money. The Does statutory I- limitation for claiming for injustice is about is six years after the discovery of the injustice, as far as I know. Okay. So we've gone way past that date yeah. by a couple of hundred years. And then I'm going to say, how would you compensate something like that? Because money terms back then were very different to what they are now. Um, but you well, know. What, what harm has been done to the people who, I mean, all they have to do is say, look, we got it wrong. We all know they got it wrong. I suppose the harm would be that, Many women, uh, 375 years ago, uh, may not have had babies, brought family members. So actually, 11 people were executed. Out of all of that, maybe 300 people weren't born. If you go along the family trees and everything, family trees were cut. cut. Where are you going, Phil? Where am I going? It's it's Very killed. It's, it, they by killing eleven people, they yeah. killed maybe <laughs> generations off. I oh, but you could say that about anything. Yeah, you anybody could. Who dies, you could say you're killing off generations. I mean, it's a point, but it's a bit sorry to be direct, but it's a bit obscure. Yeah. It's a bit of a tangent, <laughs> <laughs> if you don't mind me saying. That's that's fine. That's fine. So, um, well, similar things happened. So this happened in the US. Uh, a very similar thing happened uh, to women who I were think said to be I witches think, here in the yeah. UK, didn't they? 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's a terrible. The witch hunts were terrible because they were our doctors. Mm. And as a consequence of that, we now have a system which is we're being abused by the pharmaceutical companies who are feeding us poison all day long. I mean, everybody's supposed to take a pill these days. I don't take any pills at all. A doctor I know said the, the, the healthiest people that come to my surgery, the, uh, the old people who are healthier, are those who don't take any pills at all. Have a whiskey a night or something. When I travel around South America, I go to juice bars and places like that. And when you go to those places, they'll they'll give you a drink that's a tonic that applies to any malady that you may have. You know, and it's like the opposite of McDonald's. McDonald's, if you eat enough McDonald's, your liver will start to fail and you'll become very ill. You'll become incredibly fat because of the sh high sugar content. You know, according to the film Super Size Me, that's what happens. If you go to good documentary, South actually. America, it's the opposite. Everything you eat is healthy and good for you. It makes you feel better and makes you live longer. Hey, we're coming to the end of the show now, Phil, as, 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 as in time's running on. But I just wanted to tell you about basically, this. Yeah, so basically, the, the witches were brilliant. I mean, they should never have been. No, yeah. they should have been promoted. It's just that they, because of their power within society, because they were the doctors in communities, often they weren't all good but most of them were good and um because of that they they were feared because of their power within communities and they're also pagan so they the root the origins of their craft and art was not christian so the christians stopped stomped, stomped on them and they had them murdered wow yeah terrible um you know i think we should bring back maybe a bit of we should you know if someone is a witch then they should be um taken to task for that i mean i it, every time i saw liz truss on tv i think <laughs> let's bring back the witch trials <laughs> oh dear you, you mentioned mcdonald's there right with burgers there are other burger chains there are there are the burger chains wimpy is one of them they're opening back up in the uk i took the other half i thought oh we haven't been to wimpy for about 15 years so i thought right was it, let, right? it was bog standard burgers right just have a right we had we had um a thick strawberry milkshake each regular yep. chips yeah um uh, a biggish burger i can't remember what it was and some onion rings guess how much that came to 20 quid 35 pounds my mouth dropped open when they said oh 35 pounds mr keeler i was like We've literally had bog standard burgers and a milkshake. Brilliant. Uh, and never again. Never again. I don't know how they make those prices up, but uh, I'm not going to go there again for that. McDonald's, far superior out of Wimpy for that price. That's terrible. Not that I really go to burger chains that much, to be fair, but, you know, I thought, you know, you just go out once, once in a blue moon and charge £35. No way. No way. We'll have a full burger inquiry after the show. Uh, that's it for this edition of Strange But True Radio. I've got a little Jack Shih Tzu dog wanting desperately to be taken out for a wee. So that is the end of the show. News talk for a mixed up generation with Philip Jones and Philip Keeler. Can I just see, Phil, I'm just going to see if we can get him to speak. <laughs> Jack, speak. No. Speak, speak. I'm not pinching him, honest. Are you going to say anything? Going to woof? No, nothing. All right, join us for a new podcast. Everybody available to download every Saturday. There you go by 20 hundred hours UK time. Take care of yourselves. See you next week. We are not responsible for your behaviour. We believe in common sense. We need a political revolution in the UK. No, 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 no crisis, no.